So we've got our creature now all on one layer, which allows us to use tools like direct adjustments to treat the whole thing at once, right? And it's good to start with levels. I'm going to brighten it all up a little bit. Because what I'm going for here, and it can help to have just a gray background turned on, is that this creature just looks like it's kind of cleanly lit, like it's on a sound stage, and I can use it for anything. And then I can go to color balance, and I can adjust it all together instead of individually. And maybe I want it a little bit more towards the reds. It's like glazing on a painting. You can kind of treat everything the same, and it will help bring things together. I can play with the highlights, bring those into a similar treatment of color balance. Notice the green and the blues really kind of fade away, which helps everything come together. And then the shadows, just reestablish some of these tools just slightly. I can go back in my history. Remember, this is a, a duplicate. So I think those changes help. And the other thing I think is even more helpful is I can use dodge, burn, and sponge on the whole thing. So again, I use these tools at less than a 20% exposure. I do it to the midtones, and I do it with a large brush with 0% hardness. And if I want to use dodge, I can kind of match a highlight that's running up the back onto the top of the head, even into these kind of feathers. Give a little bit more light. So my brush is just large, but 0% hardness. A large soft brush with an exposure of less than 20. Because if I have the exposure, its default is 50. If I have it at 50 or higher, or really anything over 20, it just makes changes too quick. <laughs> it's almost like I'm painting instead of just lightening. Because you can always just hit it over and over again where you think you need more of it. Like on the jaw here, catching light. Maybe on the top of the mouth here. So it transitions into that kind of fur lip there a little bit better. I can brighten the eyes. Remember, this is just the midtones. It's not going to affect the dark shadows. I can get more of a highlight on the back here. top of the arm. Like you really can control a lot with the lighting just with dodge and burn. So see those differences. Okay, now that's dodging. Now I can do the same with burning. Same thing, large brush, 0% hardness, maybe a little bit smaller brush so I can get into some of these cast shadows like underneath the arm. So the burn tool, I'm taking these actual pixels and in a targeted way, I am you doing levels, but I'm just doing levels for the midtones, darkening the levels in the midtones only where I click with this targeted cursor, with like a paintbrush. So it's bringing out the shadows, it's darkening, but just in the midtones. If I want it to get darker, I can just hit it over and over and over again. So it's a way of kind of evening out the, the lighting direction across your creature even before we bring it into an environment so that it's internally consistent. And because it's all merged together now, I can do it on all parts all at once. What I can't do because it's merged is like a race away from this and reveal the blue underneath, which would be cool to do, but, but that's why I have my layers underneath to play with. Okay, and then the third thing is if anything looks too colorful. You know, I can knock down the lights and darks this way, but sometimes things will get too saturated or not saturated enough. And that's where the sponge tool comes in. So again, dodge, burn, and sponge. Sponge can be set to saturate or desaturate. I'm going to start with desaturate to take intensity of color away. Again, a flow of less than 20 and a large size at a 0% hardness. 
I'm always going to recommend you use these tools in the same way. And then anywhere I think the color is a little bit stronger than it should be, I kind of squint. I can hit it and just take a little bit of that saturation away. Move that color a little bit towards gray. But not all the way towards gray. I feel like I want a little bit more contrast of these feet. So I'm going to go to burn, and this time I'm going to burn the midtones a little bit more aggressively. And then if I'm feeling really confident, I can go to burn the shadows. And you'll see how quickly it gets to black. But I really want that to be like a dark underneath. So I'm just doing that very quickly and lightly because I don't want it to go to solid black. If it goes to solid black, then I don't have any pixels to actually change, because you can't change black. You don't have any pixel definition once you get to black. So this is the fine tuning. Okay, now what if there's bigger problems? Things you've identified that you didn't fix when it was in its multi-layered phase. For instance, like the top of this beetle shell and this, and this fur, and that just doesn't look great, and that edge. So now I'm going to make a new layer on top, and I'm going to label that layer clone stamp. This is like the finished waxing of the car that we've built. This is all still in assignment two, just the refining of it. I'm going to mark that red because it's really important to know what your clone stamp layer is. And then just like we used it before, I'm going to select or use its setting at the top to sample from all layers. And I'm going to turn off that background layer because I don't want to accidentally copy gray pixels. And I'm going to hold down Option. I'm going to use a brush. So I'm using the clone stamp, but you have brush settings. That's soft edged and not that big because this is for like fine refinements. And I'm going to start it at 100% opacity. And I'm going to hold down Option for where I want to target and clone stamp from. And then I'm going to get rid of this hard edge. And I have to move my clone stamp by holding down Option and retargeting when I want it to move. So I want that hair to slowly take over. And then I want it to start taking over into this yellow hair from this beetle. Now, I'm safe in doing this because it's all on a new layer. So I'm not replacing the pixels that I'm painting over, even though I'm doing it at 100% opacity. I can still erase from them. Okay, I can also go the other way. But now that I have a soft edge, I'm going to take it down to a lower opacity and start blending the yellow with the blue. Because I remember where it's copying from. And this is how I can transition and soften and soften this highlight there a little bit. And then for this as well, I can just soften and blend that, all with clone stamping. If I think at the end of the day it's not, it doesn't need to be as sharp as I had it. Okay, if there are things on the edge I still need to take care of, I can treat it all on one. So I'm going to use a feather that's a little bit heavier here. Let's say uh, eight pixels. And I'm going to use my magic wand. So I'm going to use my magic wand instead of my lasso and feather. And I'm going to go to select and mask. And I'll go up to like maybe three and a half pixels. Now, instead of hitting delete and doing it from everywhere, I'm going to use this as a mask. And I'm going to use my eraser. 
at 100% opacity because it's only going to erase away from what is selected. And then I'm going to erase away on the those edges that I want feathered and softened. And if I need it even more so, I can do it all again. So really softening. These edges. Wherever those feathers are. That helps kind of the light come through the feather. Then when it gets to rock, I, I don't do that anymore. I want that to be sharper. So you can see on the gray that difference from like harder to softer edge textures. I can also do it directly with a smaller brush and just tweak it. like using the tablet, I can do like little small erasing. And does that look better than it looked before? I think so. Okay, there's just that edge I want to burn. I'm gonna burn the highlight in this case. And I can burn what I clone stamped as well. And I can also erase away from what I clone stamped. So this is my clone stamp layer. And that's pretty helpful. But if I think it needs to be massaged and blended, I can erase it with a soft eraser at a low opacity. And reveal what's underneath a little bit more. Because sometimes our clone stamping can be a little clunky. And that's understandable. So we have all these options. To fix and help our creature design. And now we've made it kind of as good as we can make it. Now it's time to bring it in to our landscape that landscape that can still be improved, right? And desaturate a little bit on this edge. Maybe erase away and soften a little bit from this. Just for maybe burn a little bit of this. So this is a lot of the finishing work that can happen in concept designs, especially when you're doing character work. This is in order to make them useful and practical. So I'm going to get that highlight back. So here I'm going to dodge the highlights just so that really comes forward. Now, the good news is we've talked about copyright before. The more you make these kind of changes, the more you are transforming other people's pixels into your own creation. Even when it just comes to lighting. And color and texture and blending. And the reason we combine at least five elements, so this has a lot more than five elements, is that the hope is the photographer of that hippo would never recognize their hippo photograph in this. The photographer of that lizard, the photographer of that puppy, the photographer of that beetle, the photographer of this toad, the photographer of that lava flow, the photographer of that slug. But here's the kicker. This is how responsible I am as an artist. Even if they did, every single one of these images was sourced from Pixabay, which has a Creative Commons open license. 